Ikut. Bus. Yes. Uh, what are you wearing, Radu? I'm so glad you asked, random person. This is a vest made by my grandma. It keeps you really warm and ensures mobility, you know, not having sleeves. And I've had it for two years now. And you know, I, I still fit in it. It's really useful as the winter comes in and the cold as well. We haven't had a proper movie review in a long time. I talk about them on my Instagram in stories sometimes, but it's not the same as making a video. I haven't stopped watching movies in the meantime. I still watched a lot of them. So I thought why not talk about some of them? Maybe some of you will want to watch them as well. Also, don't forget to turn on the subtitles in Spanish if you need them. Okay, the first one, yeah, I saw them, I saw the minions. I, uh, you know, I think I've seen all of them actually somehow. I don't like the minions that much. I don't think they're as cute as some people know uh, they do. But this one was fun. I would have wished more attention was placed on small Gru, little Gru. But you know, this is a huge box office success. It's a movie for families and for children especially. And I think adults even can enjoy it. You know, it's not a masterpiece. It's a minions movie. The money it, it got speaks for itself. Uh, maybe it's six. Is that right? 5, 4.5, 6? It's tolerable. Disenchanted is the sequel of Enchanted, of course. And I remember seeing it a long time ago. I still have some of the songs from that movie stuck in my head. For me, Amy Adams will always be the princess. She's, she was perfect as the princess. Her mannerisms, her way of speaking. She was straight from a fairy tale and I thought that was enchanting it was very cute and she continues to be like that in this movie even as years passed she looks amazing what happens let's say they after the happily ever after and they, they play on that they move to a suburb and they try to become you know part of the american dream american family living in the suburbs but it doesn't work out and she wants to change things about her life and it doesn't really go according to plan a bit long i think it's two hours something but it's fun it's enjoyable not as good as the first movie so don't go expecting to relive your memories your early teenagehood it's still enjoyable it's it's a family movie again and it's one that tries to impart a lesson as they used to do 6.5 more than the minions movie of course it's it's better what a change of registry with this one all quiet on the western front is a war movie and it's from the point of view of german soldiers in the first world war it's also after a book that i really loved with the same title of course all quiet on the western front by eric maria remark the movie is hard to digest it shows you the gruesomeness of war it shows you the randomness of death basically in the first minutes it's about this young man in germany who along with his entire generation in high school signs up to go to the front lines to go to war so they go willingly to the front lines they are thinking that they will serve their motherland and stuff like that and obviously the realities of war set in pretty fast trench warfare attacking and retreating and it's a good movie it's a good war movie i would have included it in my video about war movies if it had come out but it's very new i would give it an 8 8.5 even i like war movies the lost city is a sunday comedy some movies especially this kind of movies are sunday comedies the movies that you put on on a sunday afternoon and you just let it run without having to pay too much attention it's also not that bad as i thought originally sandra bullock spends the entire movie in this ridiculous bedazzled outfit in the jungle for some reason the jungle is a place where comedies happen a lot she is basically a writer of uh, erotic fiction and she writes about this lost city of z and of course a rich megalomaniac played by harry potter i'm sorry i don't i don't remember his name i know him as harry potter i'm sorry that's the curse of the actor of the role until he kidnaps her and makes her tell him where the actual lost city is and this guy channing tatum played by channing tatum tries to save her and he has a crush on her it's endearing and enjoyable in a stupid way six a love song for bobby long is not a sunday movie i actually discovered this movie by accident i was just flipping through the channels on tv this one really captivated me it had such endearing scenes with um, just sitting on a porch in louisiana or whatever having the rain outside it hit all the right spots for me in that exact moment and i watched it all and it was very very good john travolta and scarlett johansson do an amazing job it's about this professor who's hiding from his past drinks a lot he's living with his former assistant 
assistant in the university and this girl moves in and tries to reclaim the house of her mother from them. It starts off as a comedy but as you get to know them as you watch them interact it gets much heavier and I think it's a good combination and it's a right proportions as well. I love John Travolta I think he's a wonderful actor he has such a range he's able to play from hairspray to you know pulp fiction it's it's amazing and um, his skill as an actor really shows in this movie as well it's totally worth it I would say 8.5 as well <laughs> Whenever I see a new Marvel thing nowadays, I'm de I'm depressed basically after I've seen this movie because it, it sucked all of the fun from the entire universe for me. I suddenly realized watching it that I'm too old to be watching this kind of movies. Now, will I never watch Marvel movies? I don't know, but I won't be as excited after seeing this. It was so bad. It was incredibly bad. The the storyline, the, the bad humor, the even the effects were not as good. The end scene I don't know if I should tell you if you haven't watched it, but I don't think I'm spoiling anything. The end scene when he gives powers to all of these children and they fight the monsters. Wow, I was that. Uh, it was depressing. Damn, it was bad. I've seen a lot of these movies with Alien vs Predator and Predator Alone. The latest one, it's um, could you say it's a prequel? And you have this young girl who is disregarded by her people, trying to become a hunter to prove that she can be a hunter. Despite being a prequel, Oops. Yes, what do you want? They smell nice. So we have received a visit from our own predator. Can you not put your butt in the camera, sir? Don't, don't mess there. Back. Don't hide from me. We have repelled the invasion of the Frank. So as I was saying about this movie, although it's a prequel, it felt like an original idea. It felt like a new movie. And I hope we see this kind of almost historical movies, historical settings, even though they're science fiction and they have, I don't know, time travel or whatever. I think it's great that we get to see this kind of um, setting that we don't usually see. And I liked it. The only thing that bothered me is that the predator was very, very dumb. Like he would walk straight at the main character. Can you, can you not? So as I was saying again, the only thing that bothered me is that a Predator was very dumb. Like he would straight up walk towards his victims, giving them the chance to fight back. And he would never block, he would never have this any kind of shield, he would never move around. He would just like straight up walk like a zombie to his victim. 6.8, I would say. Topu. Stay there. I see you. Ticket to Paradise is a um, family comedy, is a um, romantic family comedy. It has two great actors, George Clooney and Julia Roberts. They play this divorced couple who have to attend the wedding of their daughter. Are we relaxed? Do you want to invade more? Stopu. Stopu. It was funny, but something was missing from it. Something was lacking from this movie. I'm not exactly sure what. It's good, don't get me wrong. But I was expecting something more from these two actors. Be free. We weren't able to deliver that because of the writing, the directing, I don't know. I didn't feel the chemistry that much. Nevertheless, still good. Six. Yeah, this one deserves, if not a 10, a 9, 9.5. It was probably the best movie that I've seen this year. Totally unexpected. I think it totally flies under the radar for most people and critics. But Idris Elba and Tilda Swinton make an amazing job. They're basically two people in a room telling stories. I'm not going to take away anything if I tell you that he's a genie, a genie in a bottle, and he's telling his uh, stories from ancient Constantinople to modern times. So captivating. It's pretty long as well. It's over two hours. But but you don't really feel them. It's so good. It captivates you so well. It was very good. Like I said, 9.5. Bullet Train was a mess of a movie. So much happens. So much destruction. So much death. But it's so funny. Brad Pitt is front and center of the movie. He's funny as well as charismatic. I enjoy the movie. It's not a Sunday movie. It kind of stresses you out. But I would still give it a 7.5. Felt a bit like a Tarantino movie with less blood. 
plenty of it anyway. I had a lot of expectations from Nope and it delivered and it also surprised me. Dana made this point because we watched the movie together. It's a bit cosmic horror-ish, which you know, you don't really see movies about cosmic horror to that extent. I'm not gonna tell you that much about a movie. You have to watch it. Jordan Peele is amazing. He's this director of thoughtful horror movies or thrillers rather, but he's also very funny in his skits, uh, Ken Peele, if you haven't seen them. Amazing to me to see this diversity in one person. That is the sound of uh, Frankie pooping. You, you hear that? Is it loud enough? He's digging through the sand, you know, with his little paws. Like, come on, come on. So my mom watched Come On, Come On and she urged me to watch it as well. And I didn't really like it. It's a story about this guy who is a director. He has to take care of his uh, nephew. They get along very well, but he's a very difficult child and it's a beautiful relationship and it's black and white. But I didn't really feel it because don't hate me. I don't really like children. I don't, they make me kind of nervous. This one as well in the movie made me nervous because he would at times simply just run away from this character played by Joaquin phoenix so <laughs> that made me so desperate and nervous but again i couldn't enjoy it i was just children are not my thing i'm sorry it's just i don't know i will let you decide watch it if you want and um, then tell me I, I haven't got a grade for it official competition was funny it was really funny despite being a small movie again it's a movie about three people in a room basically not just any three people it felt like a european movie with this kind of particular outlook and humor and seriousness at times assholery at times I, I don't know how to explain it but that mix to me is a european movie 7.5 as well i think now lightyear could you call it a spin-off sequel prequel even it's basically the story or the movie like here is the actual person who inspired the toy from toy story that's that's what i understood anyway this might not be accurate but this is what i understood and i think it's a smart idea to do a movie this way don't make a prequel or a sequel make a um, kind of a weird related story the movie was good i mean it was entertaining seven Oh, and the cat, and the goddamn cat is so cute. It's probably my favorite cute thing in a movie recently. He's still pooping. You hear that? He's still pooping. You finished pooping? Did you? Pooper. Yes, you came here to put the poop on my desk. He's so cute. This movie gave me a, a headache. The editing, I did not like the editing. It's so poorly done. It's too fast. Change of perspective is so fast and it's very long as well as like two hours and a half. I didn't know that much about Elvis. I feel that somehow I watched the documentary. I don't know how accurate it is. You also have Tom Hanks who plays, I guess, the villain of the movie, the manager of Elvis. The editing, I feel, is the main villain of this movie. It kept me from enjoying it properly. Seven, less, no, six, six six in a bit not 6.5 i can't really recommend it to you yeah shame now i'm not gonna talk too much about this i'm gonna let dana do the talking what surprised me because i was forced to see it of course is that it's not that bad it wasn't constant pain nothing much happened but it wasn't constant pain see that that's a plus 4.5 top gun maverick was a huge commercial success it stayed up there at number one in the box office for I don't know how many weeks. And I can see why. I liked it a lot. It felt like an old school movie. Movies that you don't really see anymore. About redemption, about you know relationship, about achievement, about trying and succeeding and even failing. You know, Tom Cruise, he still got it. It's a good movie. Eight. I really liked it. This is a weird movie. It's by Martin Scorsese. It has Oscar Isaac. That's why I watched it. It's about this guy who comes out of prison and he counts cards. Basically, he cheats in um, blackjack, I think, because he's very intelligent and he's able to keep track of all the cards. But he's a very low profile until he tries to take this younger guy under his wing and mentor him, try to set him on the right path. You can expect with these movies who start slow and low to go bigger and louder uh, at the end, but it didn't. It, it kept a low low profile the movie itself it felt like it didn't want to communicate with the viewers that much which you know can work i'm not sure it really worked with this one six sadly confessions has a lot of stories wrapped into a movie but the first one i think is the most uh, powerful one it's basically about this professor in high school in japan woman who takes revenge on a student it's not a horror movie it's not a thriller but it's terrifying eight eight point five 
A Grey Man is an action movie, an attempt by Netflix to launch a big blockbuster, but it felt like a Netflix movie. It felt kind of cheap and amateurish, it felt like a teenage movie <laughs> with adults, if that makes any sense. I didn't really like it, uh, I don't know, despite the actors, despite the directors. There's something about Netflix that ruins movies, I feel, and few of them escape. Maybe if they're externally produced and then bought by Netflix. 6.5. It's a family comedy. It's about this man, this father, who's trying to organize and be the father and be the head of the family, interact with the new relatives and the boy, the boy, the man who's gonna become the husband of his daughter. And it's it feels like the family you never had. Also, they're from a Latin American community in Miami, if I remember right. So for those of you in Latin America, this might feel like a movie that is very close to you. But it's a movie that's close to everyone who has a family. It's relatable. It's entirely relatable. And uh, the main character is so lovable despite his many flaws or because of them and I liked it I would give it an 8. Another Netflix movie which is very like The Grey Man but with Woody Harrison and uh, uh, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart has the same roles in all of his movies I feel like. It's a Sunday movie. Yep it's a Sunday comedy. 6.5. It's bad. It's bad. Do not watch this movie. It has it's a money grab. I didn't like it. It was bad. I didn't understand what was going on. It felt like a rerun, which it is. I don't recommend it for. This movie is about three Italians that come to Romania immediately before the revolution, before 1989. This scene where they try to get gas from a truck that was ongoing, that was moving. Not knowing Romanian, they have to signal the fact that they want gas. And the way they do that is, is amazing. I will give it a 7. Yeah. Northman was good. It was good. It felt Shakespearean at times and then it felt like felt like a John Wick movie, you know, man against the world. But it's it's grim, it's bloody, it's vikingish. Yeah, I liked it. 7.5. This has been the movie list. These are the movies that I watched since I made the last movie list. I think my list is up to 832 or something movies watched since 2014. This is what I do with my life. Take some value from it, from me to you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.